Hey everybody, David Duford here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another role play hot seat training session where we take time to drill and learn the entirety in bits and pieces of the final expense sales presentation. So we do role playing in hot seats uh, because it is a great opportunity to allow you to test your might, to test your ability in a safe and comfortable environment. This is a program that's available to all of my agents and agents that are contracted with me. And uh, I have to give special thanks to a particular agent, a Miss Tina out there, who actually inspired me to do this uh, on a more regular basis. And I believe, um, as she'll tell you, I think personally, but also other agents, has been a huge boon. Uh, one of the great things about this process is that you can work out some of the bigger mistakes that you're going to make ahead of time by drilling the actual presentation uh, in this environment. Uh, yeah, you get to speak in front of me. Yeah, you're kind of on the spot, but that's how you learn better. That's how you do better overall. And I think ultimately, um, the more prepared you are, to a certain extent, of course, the better off you're gonna do in the long run. So that's why we do what we do. Okay. So let's, in today's training, what we're going to do is focus predominantly on what I call part three of the final expense sales presentation. So what does that mean? So, so part three of the sales presentation is dealing with educating the client on what the, um, you know, what the product is that we're doing and, and positioning ourselves as the best choice out of the other options out there. So this is more educational than it is persuasive, although good education and, and going through this process of, of wanting to help the client is extremely persuasive. It's just not the typical or traditional type of uh, schmoozy type of persuasion tactics. It's like actually being a resource to people <laughs> and helping them understand concepts they didn't prior. Uh, so we're gonna drill this and uh, we're going to go through what my script is for the presentation side of things and how to get the client essentially trial closed into what it is that we're selling. And when I say trial closed, it means in a broader sense, conceptually closed. What I want my clients to think at the end of this scripting here is that David's product is better than the rest. The way David described it, it does my the benefits for me are this this and this relative to all these other brand name companies which are there's all sorts of negatives to and again we don't ever insinuate that you know these other guys are horrible we let our clients do that themselves which they will through some of the tactics that we use so let's go ahead and call on a few people here unless we got some brave volunteers if you do you can unmute yourself um, I'm going to reach for, a, let's see here. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, I don't know if you want to do this. Uh, I don't see where I can unmute you, but if you wanted to, you can pop the unmute button off and pop on. Um, Roland, you there, Roland? 350 teacher right on the door. I don't know if he is. Roland, can you hear me? I suppose not. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Somebody unmuted themselves. Okay. iPad 2, you're unmuted. Who is this? I uh, don't know who that is. I think they will mute you again. All right. All right, I'm calling on volunteers to put themselves in the hot seat here. And it's literally hot in this seat. I've got a hot fan blowing on my head here. Hold on. All right. Woo, okay. Tina, you want to go? Sure. All right. I'll make a fool of myself. You know me, don't you? <laughs> Let's do That's it. That's all point, right? We were just talking about that. Why not, Explain right? Explain yourself. That's the purpose. <laughs> okay, so where we're going to start here, just to refresh your memory, is where... Yeah, I know where you are. You're on okay. page six. 
the top. Okay. So I'm prospect, your client or your agent. Take me through the sales presentation. All right, Mr. Duford. So I'm sure you're well aware of all those junk mail commercials on TV and everything you've seen about insurance, right? Oh, yeah, man. I get bare. I just throw that crap in the mail. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, well, that's great. And I totally understand that. The truth is, of course, not all insurance is the same. And some programs are better than others. And I think, of course, that you should know all the information, all the facts before making a decision on the program that's right for you. So I perhaps you've heard of the difference between, for starters, is a key concept in insurance. You've probably heard of term insurance versus whole life insurance. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. No, I've, I've heard what term is. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I've heard of it. I just don't know what exactly it does. Right, of course, of course. And I, I didn't either before I got licensed. And it's a really simple concept. Uh, for instance, with AARP, typically they'll sell you term insurance. And, uh, what, and the key thing to remember about term insurance is easy to remember because it terminates. It terminates. Terminates, so what do you mean? It My ends. coverage goes so, away? Yeah. You're, so if you bought AARP back in the day, or even if you call them up today, I'm going to buy insurance, you're going to be covered until you're 80 and you're done. Now I'm you like, gotta go I'm 75 right now. Oh, Young no. 75, of course. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say, oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> so you're saying that I'll lose it if I were to pay on this thing for five years. That's crazy. What about your yeah. crap? You buy something like that. I guess people don't realize that because AARP doesn't fully inform you, maybe. Uh, so that's why I'm here to make sure you know all the facts up front and then you can decide what's right. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. Some people do, I guess. They may buy it knowing what it is if they're younger, younger than 75. But at this age, maybe it doesn't make so much sense for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know when I'm going to die. It could be tomorrow. It could be in. 10 plus years, you know, I oh. want to have coverage the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course I hope you're here a long time. I'm enjoying getting to know you and we, it seems like you're in pretty good shape. So you're doing great for your age or, you know, I hope I'm doing as well when I'm there as you are. Um, so that's term insurance. It sounds like you understand it very well and you've already decided you're not interested in that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. As, now what I sell, is whole life insurance. And if you qualify, that means you're covered from day one. It never cancels because of age or your health status. Once you buy it, it stays the same. It's level. It's often called whole life level insurance. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna be covered 100%. Is that what you're saying, like from the first day? Yeah, yeah, if you qualify. Not everybody qualifies for it okay uh, but that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my handy dandy computer here and see what you qualify for I never like to give you promises up front uh, because then if it doesn't you know like it just depends on your exact health status and that's why I'm an independent growth broker with 15 plus carriers to find one that suits you the best coverage for the best money does that make sense or the least money sure does that make sense Sure. Okay. So moving on. Uh, so you've heard of these companies, Colonial Pen, Mutual of Omaha, Physical, Physicians Mutual. They have what's called guaranteed acceptance coverage. And that means that you get it there's, that uh, they're, they do not ask you any health questions. Yeah, nine ninety nine dollars a unit. I know what you're talking about. Not What's that? That's just what they, you'll hear it when you get out there. People just, that's what Colonial Pen, that's their gimmick. It's $9.99 per unit. But the unit can be, it's the, the unit is how much coverage per $9.99 they pay, but that's the X factor, right? It's going to be less the older you are. Yeah. So it makes it sound like it's cheap. That's just $9.99 insurance, you know, not really. But. 
So but what's a unit? So that's very deceptive, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. So when you, <laughs> when you have your clients ask, yeah, how much is a unit? And so I don't know. Depends on how old nobody you are. knows. No, nobody knows. <laughs> You got to call up and talk to them. And then they tell you it's not going to be 10 bucks a month. It's going to be a hundred. Yeah. Like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they charge us. They're ending up more expensive. They pay, they're paying for all this mailing and TV commercials. And we're cutting through that. We're setting aside those costs. And that's why I can get you very likely if you qualify something better, better coverage for less money. Does that make sense? Makes sense. All right. That's great. We're on the same page. Uh, because uh, what happens with these guaranteed issue companies, and I have guaranteed issue companies as well, there is no, some people don't qualify for anything except that, and that means they're not covered in the first two years. However, for instance, with Mutual of Omaha, you, it's, it's better than a, a savings account, because if God forbid you died within two years, and that would be so sad, but your family would see that you intended the best, and you, they get back all your premiums plus 10%, which, of course, that's better than a savings account, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I like that program, and I think that makes sense. So what do I do? So, but if you're in good shape, you, you said told me you're in good shape, right? Yeah, just a touch of cancer. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would mean you'd have to the go. Stuff you'll hear prospects say. Mm. Oh, I'm fine, except for the cancer. Touch a can <laughs> touch a cancer. Just a little bit of pancreatic <laughs> cancer. It's not a lot. Yeah. Just a <laughs> hey, uh, okay. Well, I got to hand it to you. You got a great attitude, Mr. Duford. Right. Great attitude. And uh, let's see. I already went through all this. So out of these three programs, so well, you've already said you don't want term. So, so it's really better if we ask you health questions because then you can possibly qualify for a better because the guaranteed issue is going to be more expensive and you're not covered the first two years. So the next step is, uh, I don't know what the next step is. Yeah, let's, doing, let's, let's get let's off start. script here. I think, I think yeah. we've done enough. So me too. Oh, overall, um, how did you think you did there script wise? I thought I did. I was winging it. I wasn't, I was mostly winging it and basing it on my memory. And I thought I did well, but maybe I didn't. Yeah. I would give you a B. Oh, <laughs> but you're so, honest. So thank you. B is for bad. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. First she loser. She was rougher than you. Way rougher Second place than is you. first loser here in this DeFord household. Do um, you want to know how to make it an A? Absolutely. Okay, it might have been a B plus, but oh, it was. Oh. There's room for improvement. So a couple of things here. First of all, if you won this, this sounds great, just like we were talking about earlier. That's this on its own is good enough. Okay, like you're conceptually explaining to the client what you do and how it's different from the from the competition. Okay, you're differentiating yourself. That's the key component to a successful educational presentation. And you've done it not in a smoothy, schmarmy type of presentation style, but you've done it in an educational step-by-step -step approach. You know, like you heard my comments like, yeah, I just throw that crap in the mail or that's a bunch of crap. What if I outlet? Like I say that stuff because that actually happens in the field. People start getting pissed when you start reciting what these companies do and they realize like, that's a bunch of garbage, you know, like nobody's ever told them this. Okay. So you take this position, you move from salesperson to advisor because now you've given them fat. And just like you said too, which is great. You want to give them the facts and the education so they can make their own minds up of what you're doing best for them or not. So you, you give them, you empower them to make the decision that's best for them. But the truth is, once we look at what the other guys do, they're so horrible that there's no way, you know, I say no way, virtually not zero percent that you're going to lose a deal to one of the other ones. So um, on par, you did great. Where can we improve? On what? On what I did on, great? On, on par. So I'm just saying across the board of what we did was ah. 
good. So a couple of things I've noted here. Number one, you want to make sure that you go through the sequence correct. And I think part of this is because we're just kind of pulling this out of the ethers. And this is, it's not an exact presentation, but the assumption up to this point is that you've done a little bit of health qualifying, okay? And um, we kind of know with general reasonable expectation that this client is going to be preferred or graded or modified or guaranteed, I should, I should say. So prior to this section, you've asked all the health questions, okay? You've kept track of all this. It's likely if you're using Best Plan Pro, you would have plugged all this in to see kind of what's coming out. Um, you would have looked at the cheat sheet by now. You would have had an indication of where this, not again, not 100% certain, but 80 to 90% certain that this is going to be so and so company. So you have reasonable expectation and a positive odds in your favor uh, situation where you can proceed to confidently say that you can get them first day full coverage. So what you were saying is, I don't know if I can get you this thing but I might have to get you this two year wait. Right. And what that's, it's, again, it's not wrong. It's just that when we present, we, we wanna first know that obviously what we're presenting they can get, right? But, but added on top of that, we wanna be in a position where they, we, we are enthusiastic about the recommendation because our enthusiasm, it's like, look, we can get you approved. The great news is that you qualify for first day full coverage, whole life insurance. You know, just oh. be enthusiastic. Not saying that you weren't. You were very, you're an enthusiastic. Player. I understand. But yeah, yeah. So here's how the sequence sounds. So first of all, the term section sounded great. Term terminates. I'm big on like keywords and simplifying the complex, right? Mr. John, you know, our clients are simple people, salt of the earth for the most part. So you got to take complicated co topics and make them simple. So in this part, we say, Mr. Jones, let me explain to you how term life insurance works. You probably get junk mail from ARP, AARP, um, Globe Life is another one you may want to mention. They'll usually nod their head along. And uh, this is what's called term insurance, which do you know that term means terminating, which you said, which is great. So that's kind of one of those questions that's like, what do you mean terminates? Who in their right mind who wants life insurance coverage to pay for the burial, not knowing when they're going to die, want a plan that terminates? Think about it. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a gamble. People assume that just like the car insurance, their house insurance, whatever, that they've got it and they're not going to lose it as long as they pay. But when you tell them that they can lose it because they just happen to be too old, it sends off a lot of red flags and you've, you've gotten their attention. So that term terminates is powerful because it's a pattern disruptor. It gets them really clued into what you're saying. So you did great there. The two things you want to explain in the term section, you did one of them, you didn't do the other one. Term terminates. Mr. Jones, you buy this plan with AARP and you live the day after 80 years old, you lose your coverage. All that money you paid in ain't worth a dime. You got it. You lost it. Okay. Mm. So you, you basically said that. Okay. I'm just putting my whole stylistic spin on it. Right. So, mm -hmm. but then here's what I say to add injury to insult or insult to injury. I don't know what <laughs> so do you know? that as you keep the plan, that with term insurance, the price increases. Ah. So, check, so check this out. I had, a, I had a client, one of my first clients in Flintstone, Georgia, she was 76, yeah. She made $900 a month in social security. Uh, she had one of the AARP plans. At 75, she was paying $40 a month. At 76, it tripled in price, more than tripled. It was $140 a month, all because she got a year older, right? And here's the thing, Mr. Jones, somebody who's making $800 a month on a fixed income with no savings, do you think that it's going to have a bad negative impact by having a price increase that dramatic? For her, she had to choose between insurance, medications, and paying utilities. 
it's a travesty. And the thing is they hide this stuff in the fine print that you can't see it. So um, off script here, a couple of things. So you wanna mention the pricing, that the pricing goes up. That always angers every prospect. How often does the price go up or what's the schedule for them? Every five years, so like, I think it's 51 to 55 and then 50, it's like, yeah. Then it's 56 to 60 and then onwards and upwards. So and is that normal that it would triple from 75 to 76? Absolutely. They're trying to get rid of the client. They don't want uh, the little people on their dying. They, the uh, insurance companies want to take all those premium dollars for the 10 years they've had it and pocket it. You know, and so, so they can't cancel the plan because contractually they're not allowed to till 80. But what they can do is say, we'll raise our premiums, triple the price. And am I allowed to say that to the client that that's the motive? on the part of the insurance company? I don't I mean, I don't think there's any legality concern saying that to me, to me, it's like, I might say, if you wanted to be double cautious, I would say, you know, it almost seems as if the motive is to get rid of you, if you think about it. So you can kind of phrase it a little differently. It sure seems that way to me. Because in a way I'm bad mouthing my own industry, right? When I'm saying that. Yes. So here's the thing you should, you should. Okay. There's, when it comes to positioning, selling, that kind of thing, we want to stand as renegades in the business, okay? So what I mean by that is we want to be, we want it there to be good guys and bad guys. It, it is ingrained in the human psyche to have the good people that are fighting for the little man and the bad people that are trying to take advantage of seniors, okay? You, people think like this, you want to position yourself as the good guy. Now you don't go around saying, I'm the good guy, everybody, I'm the good guy. See how great I am? That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you take a stand and you call out the big dudes, the big companies, and explain and prove to the prospect that these companies are not all they are cracked up to be. And they're in fact not working in your best interest. Mm. And, and to say so emphatically. So mm -hmm. does that make sense? Like, oh yeah, this, this <laughs> is very powerful. Like it's, this is more than just, and, and it, this is the truth too. That's the thing is like, we have the ability as independent agents to shop different carriers, to get our clients the best price, to get our clients the best underwriting. Even if we don't have all the companies like you and I talking about, we have access, we can go back and get it. Well, if they just do business with AARP or Colonial Penn, they'll never get that, okay? They're relegated to a specific set with one product only. So we stand in that position of being the force for good. I don't know if I call the competition forces for evil, <laughs> but I'll let my client decide. I'll take a stand and say, all I know is that it's a bunch of garbage that you got to wait two years. It's a load of crap. You got to have price increases every five and they take the plan away from you at eight. That's, you know, so I kind of embody that kind of like, I can't believe. Are we allowed to say that? I think that's unconscionable. Yeah, it's like your pen. It's your free, free country. It's your pen. Yeah. I think this okay. is bullshit that you guys <laughs> raise prices on me. I, yeah, if I get the right person into a, into a whip, yeah, I'll, I'll say just that. Because I want them to know, and I say it in a sincere manner, I want them to know that it's, it is BS, man. And the thing is, Tina, you're a brand new agent, I'm telling you. Jimmy's on the call here, he probably knows. Any of you other agents who've been doing this for a couple of years, y'all know agents, or I should say, y'all know clients that have died within two years' time. Or y'all have known clients that have lived past 80, or have seen people that have had these term insurance plans that have exploded on them or some kind of insurance that what they thought isn't actually what they got and they ended up losing mm -hmm. it for something that was out of their control. And it happens every single day. And so, you know, um, that's why I'm emphatic about this because of the thing, is, the thing is, is, is if our client goes to Colonial Pen and they're healthy and they die within the first two years, they don't get anything except their money. Um, what but if they, Oh, go ahead. Last point. If they did qualify for first day full coverage, 
they would have been paid, their family would have been taken care of. Of course. So that's so why I'm they, like, you know, we got to take this good guy, bad guy position and be an advocate for justice. You know, an advocate for the little man. Oh, you know, and absolutely. Our, position the, our adversaries is inferior. And, but let them decide it, which is not complicated. Anybody with a brain would look at it. Uh-huh. So does Colonial Penn also raise its rates on a schedule? Uh, no. It's a, so, so let's get back on script here. So what I, so the term of section was great. But what you want to do after that is talk about guaranteed issue. That's the second place to start. Because again, we're isolating out the bad choices. Term insurance first then guaranteed issue insurance or guaranteed acceptance or colonial pen. Again, why do we do that? Because we don't want our clients to inadvertently get a plan that's inferior to something that would have fully covered them. The assumption coming into this is that you know enough or good enough information that you feel pretty confident that they will qualify for it. So you can say with certainty that, hey, look, you know, guaranteed issue, if you've got Alzheimer's, you've got real bad shape, you're bedridden, it's a great plan for, but if you're in good shape like you, you're taking a gamble. You know, I relate it back to gambling. Um, mm -hmm. Who wants to gamble with their life? I mean, it sounds extreme, but the family won't, will certainly not think it's extreme if they end up with absolutely nothing when they could have had enough to bury. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like to make sure that we take that section to talk about you know, a guaranteed issue and isolating it out is not a good choice either. And again, we name Colonial Pen for that reason, uh, just because it's the most well-known brand name company that does guaranteed issue. They spend millions a year in junk mail and TV ads. The, the, so the final section sounded great. Um, here's what I do, it's whole life insurance. I like adding into the script. It's real simple and easy how it works. There's three main benefits. The first being your rates never go up. You'll never get a price increase. The second is your, your coverage never cancels due to age or health. You cannot outlive this coverage. And the third one is you're 100% covered from the first day. If you die from natural causes, accidental causes, you're protected. Mm -hmm. so, so bottom line, Mr. Jones, what you see is what you get with us. This plan is designed to protect you and to give you the kind of peace of mind you're really looking for. Does that make sense? So notice a couple of things I do on the benefits. I say the same thing twice. This is, this is granular, it's not a major issue, but I think it's helpful because sometimes you need a concept re-explained in a different way with our prospects to help them kind of grasp what they're looking at. So I, like I said, first of all, your price never goes up. That means you'll never get a rate increase in the mail. Well, like, well, no, duh, you just said it, it didn't go up. But by repeating it in that way, it kind of emphasizes the importance of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same, same thing with, you can never outlive it. You don't ever have to worry that you're ever not gonna have insurance as long as you pay a premium. So I've restated the same point between mm -hmm. each of those mm -hmm. sentences. And the third is you're 100% covered from the first day. The second point, if you die from natural causes, accidents, you have total peace of mind. You're covered. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to just, I don't want to gloss over those benefits. I want to be emphatic about how important they are, about how powerful it is, and make sure the client understands as simply as possible what they're getting for the program. You also, which is good, did the trial close you said i think you did yeah you said out of these three options term guaranteed issue or mine which works best did you say that i don't think i did i don't think you did okay so we stopped right before that point yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. so let's talk about things we can improve let's start there so once you've gone through the script that i've just described you want to make sure that your trial closing it sounds like this. So Mr. Jones, to summarize, term insurance terminates. Colonial pen, no coverage, natural death for two years. My plan takes care of you, 100% coverage, never goes up in price. Out of these three options, which fits you best? 
what do you like the best? And Tina, you can play prospect. You say, you say mine, go ahead and do it. And I'll kind of script through this. Well, I, I want to be covered from day one, of course. I don't want my rates to go up and I don't right. want to lose my insurance. Absolutely, 100%. That's, and the thing is, that's what everybody I see says that is concerned about paying for final expenses. Uh, they don't want to fool around with insurance that's not going to be there when they need it. So off script. So that's kind of what I say. I, I say the that's what everybody says comment because it's like third party validation. They're making a good decision. You know, uh -huh. everybody says the same thing. It's like, okay, I feel better about this, right? People follow the crowd. It's just the way it is. Uh -huh. um, so I like saying that. And, but I notice I give them the decision on what to say. I don't ever tell them those two suck and then mine's the best. Right. I obviously insinuate it, right? I've obviously set the presentation up to display it in this manner. But I give the responsibility or the decision-making power to the client to determine what is which one is best for them. Uh huh. So they don't feel pressured. They feel like I'm an advisor. I'm curious about their opinion, and I want I want to know what they feel. I want to know what they think. Again, counterintuitive to traditional sales, but I believe is is sincere and it's powerful. It's much better, I think. Okay, so a couple more things to improve. And, and some of these are just, one of these you'll get over time. The other one, just make sure you prepare. Your presentation in this section, imagine yourself as a trial lawyer, okay? Let me give you an <laughs> allegory. So there is a team of the def, uh, defendants. Yeah, the def, defendants lawyers team, attorney team. Uh, they were going through all they have a client who's being charged with murder they believe they've got a case where he didn't do it so they're trying to craft their case against the prosecution to try to put in shreds of doubt to eliminate the conviction one of the junior members of the of the attorney's firm says to the head defendant i think i think we've got an, i think we've got enough information we should be okay it should be should be good enough so the, the client, the, the head attorney reaches over, grabs the guy by his labels, and he says, good enough is not enough. You must have a preponderance of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We're talking about this man's life here. And so I say all this because preponderance of proof is the key word to remember. We have to envision our clients do not trust us. We have to envision our clients are suspicious of us. If we start with the worst case scenario in mind and we design a presentation around overcoming that resist, it may not be there and a lot of times it's not, but if we plan to fight against the worst case scenario, we're gonna have better outcomes with all of those and where they're suspicious or not. Uh -huh. so a, lot of, a lot of your presentation has done this, but where we go further here in the presentation with the preponderance of proof concept is one, Always print off the material, the sales materials from the companies. Uh, you can find that on the training website under the sales section. When you're describing term insurance and you're saying, hey, these plans cancel at 80 and the prices go up. That's crazy, isn't it? You should be thinking, uh, you should be thinking, yeah, right. Or you should be thinking the client's thinking, uh-huh, yeah, whatever. You're just a salesman. So what would you say if he actually said that? Well, I would say, well, let me show you in writing and it's not even my own stuff that i'm not making it up this is legit so we just assume that's what they're thinking we do that so we show them the best sales tool to use selling final expenses our clients or i'm sorry our agents or, or a competition sales material why because it's a legal marketing piece and it has to disclose in there that it's to your weight or it's prices increase or it cancels at 80. Um, otherwise, they'll get into trouble. You know, these are big companies. They've got a lot of money to lose. They just know how to bury it inside the sales copy material to where it's not evident. And so what I do is I just say, hey, look, let me show you. Don't believe me. Let me show you what's going on here. So look, you see key right there where it says it goes up every five years and cancels at 80. And the reason that it's like, it's like that. If you only knew right. how bad it was. <laughs> look. You know, like, uh, but that's, it's like, 
for the prospect, it's like, wow, thank you so much for explaining this to me. And if there is any distrust or suspicion, a lot of it's eliminated there. Mm -hmm. Because you have not just said, but you have shown. Show or tell and show. Tell mm -hmm. the clients what the deal is, then show it to them for the added A effort. So, so you want to do that with the term section. You want to do that with colonial pen section. Again, you can find all that online on the training website. I highly recommend, especially getting started, that you do that because it just makes your case that much more. And then um, let's see what else. Oh, the last thing to add into there is the scripting of um, story time. So what I mean by that is the best way to teach is by telling stories. And the way that I know this is true is because the most widely read book that's had profound impacts on humanity since zero AD is, well, not exactly zero AD, maybe a couple hundred years later, is the Bible. The New Testament, essentially, are parables, right? So Jesus speaks in ways that uh, teaches conce biblical concepts through stories. They're the Good Samaritan, that kind of thing. And these are things that, that make an impact on the way people think. Historically, human psyche, this is how people operate. So this is not a religious issue. It's just a, it's a mm -hmm. fundamental truth. We, we sure. want to tell the benefits of our, our, our products as well as the downsides to our competitions through utilizing stories. So I'm going to give you guys, I'm gonna give you guys two stories. One I already said, um, actually I'll give you three stories. And the way I want you to include these is that in the context of describing what you do, tell them, let me tell you a little about a client I have, a, Tell, let me tell you a little bit about my boss's client and how he, his client actually had one of these term plans and what happened. So, so frame it in that particular way, because these are obviously, you don't want to say my client did this, so that's a lot. But if you just say it, well, you know, my boss told me this one story, my partner in this business told me this story about this client he had, that retains the impact of this. So here's, here's each story. And again, I want you to write these down, memorize the issues, go back and watch this on the recording. Knowing this information makes a big difference. It'll take your presentation from B to an A. Mm. So term insurance. So I had a client once who was, um, she was one of my first clients in Flintstone, Georgia. Uh, she was 76 years old, uh, living in a little small home, you know, didn't make a lot of money, maybe eight, $900 a month. And she had one of these AARP plans. And she, the reason she talked to me is because she was paying $40 a month religiously for years. And all of a sudden at age 76, the price spiked to $140 a month for no other reason than her age, Mrs. Jones. And she was in the position of having to choose between prescription payments, payments for prescriptions, payments for utilities and her life insurance. You know what she had to do? She dropped her insurance. Drop it. it's, a, it's a travesty. So that's the first door. So everything I've said there is a fear every single senior has, which is outliving their money. Okay. Never underestimate that. It's like losing livelihood or lifestyle. Uh, every senior knows or hears about seniors who eat cat food. They don't do anything. They make no money. And everybody's afraid of that on some level because it's part of the fixed income mentality that clients, that our clients develop as they receive social security. So the second, the second story is Colonial Pen. So the way I'll describe the Colonial Pen story is I'll say, so one of my, my very first client, Mr. Jones, in a place called Wildwood, Georgia, um, I met him, we talked, and I was asking him his experience with insurance. He said his dad bought insurance, told the family that he was covered, and then 12 months later, he had a stroke, and he died. He died. And the family thought, okay, well, yeah, that's bad, but we've got insurance and we'll take care of that. So they took, they went to the funeral home, they presented the policy and the funeral home said, can't do it. 
And they said, why? This is good insurance. Dad said he bought insurance. He should be covered. He said, well, here's the deal, Mr. Jones. You see in the fine print, the first two years, you only get back what you paid in plus 7%. So instead of having 10,000, you really only have 600. You're going to have to come up with another 7,000 plus to make this work. Mm. So imagine, and again, the thing is you'll see in the field, our clients are low income and birds of a feather flock together. Family generally is as well. It's not like there's one rich kid. You know, they're working class just as much. They're not going to have the money to come up with this stuff. And so my client in his position, they had to refinance their home. They had to go into debt just to put their dad in the ground. And uh, point, the moral of the story is if this guy had talked to someone like me, because he was healthy, I would have fully covered him. I would have protected him entirely. So we've now we've crafted this story of wow. So imagine that so we, we're trying to envision the pain the family will go through, the undue burden, even even the obligation, even forcing the obligation of paying for burial on family member as being the last thing that they remember. You mm. know, like mom didn't do her job as an adult. It's kind of the concept. Mm -hmm. we, tap, we tap into that with these stories. That's why they're so powerful to include. Now, the, the last story I'll say, and when I'm explaining what I do is I'll say, so for example, let me tell you how well these plans work and give you a perfect example. So I had a client, he lived in Albany, Georgia. He was 85 years old when I met him. He bought a $25,000 life insurance plan and paid a lot of money for it, but he just got remarried. You know, he had a reason to buy it. He wanted to take care of his new web, newly wed wife. And that was in May. And Thanksgiving that year, I got the call that he had had a heart attack and died. Had he had bought Colonial Pen, he wouldn't have been protected. Because he dealt with me and I was able to shop and get him the best price and coverage, we protected him from the first day. And his family got the entire payout of the death benefit. And they were taken care of. But just imagine if you were in, if you, if this guy only got colonial pen, they wouldn't have got anything. So, mm. so I like to add that in there. Sometimes I'll add that after that first story right away, just to compare and contrast, right? You know, we're all going to die, but how we die and the manner in which we do and what we do to prepare for it, the differences in the outcome, mm -hmm. that's a good comparison contrast. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much all I would say to you as far as what you can improve on here. Um, again, to just recap here, the trial close. The, and, and this goes for everybody because everybody misses some of these in uh, various amounts. So it's good training for everybody. Um, make sure that you're doing the trial close. Make sure that you're, you're showing material sales collateral of our competition. Do not be afraid of showing competition. Maybe you're worried AARP is a term, the term is cheap and people buy cheap. They don't do that. Not if you frame it the right way. You know, if you say something like, yeah, one benefit AARP has is the premiums are cheap to begin with, but not over time. You're going to pay now or you're going to pay way heavier and might not even have or could afford to keep it later by getting in one of these plans. It's kind of like a bait and switch, kind of what I say. Mm. So, I, yeah, I have no reservations. And neither should you just show our competition material. It makes you sound a lot more credible and trustworthy. And really, man, it positions yourself really well as the expert because you know your stuff and they know you know your stuff because you're running through all this stuff. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the stories. Uh, just copy my story word for word. Make it your own in your own words. Keep the stories truthfulness the same. And, and communicate that every time. Try not to forget that because those things really make a difference in people really understanding what this whole thing's all about. Excuse me. Okay. Does anybody on the line have any questions about what we've covered today? I have a question. Yeah, jump in, Tina. Go ahead. Thank you. So when, I should know the answer to this probably. When do we actually present them with the carriers that they qualify for and how much it is? And Next section. Yeah, that's, oh, that's the closing. That's all, the start of And I don't even, I'm, this is all preparatory. 
to making the offer. Or clo- I guess it's called closing. Oh, nice yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're well preparatory to make the offer at this point. If that's what you're saying, yes, that's definitely the case. But we, what this whole section does is it sets the table for us to sell them, which is moving us into section four, which is a presentation of what company they qualify for, confirming via reading the health questions that they answer no to everything, checking prescriptions one more time, and then presenting the three prices. What we'll do Friday is go over that section because we gotta know how to present everything in a good manner, focus on what really matters to the client and the overall description of what we do. A lot of it's just a rehash of the section we just completed, but then how do you present the closing question? And then dealing, of course, with the objections that sometimes follow. Okay, and I have a follow-up question. Go for it. So doesn't the prospect get annoyed that I'm saying all this stuff and I haven't even given them any offers? Of no. What they- no, 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 because you're giving them tons of value. You're, it would be one thing to just like BS them, you know, into a, a, a sequence of, you know, dazzle them with, what is it? The baffle them with BS. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you're doing that, yeah, they're going to be annoyed. Um, I remember sitting down in a sales presentation when I had my personal training gym and I called on a guy for a website uh, console. He came in and he spent like 10 minutes on the console before I had the compunction to be assertive. Uh, I was, I'm generally a nice person. Uh, two <laughs> hours later, I was there listening to a multi-level marketing pitch and the guy did not even ever come up for air to get my feedback, to have a conversation with me. It was was really annoying. Like that's when, yes, that's annoying. What's not annoying is if you're telling them stuff they don't know that matters directly to their lives and everything Uh that we've did in this today's training does that and they will appreciate you. They will appreciate you because nobody takes the time to do this. And they certainly don't expect it from salespeople, which again, increases your, every, nobody, everybody hates to be sold, but everybody loves to buy, you know, and, and a part of that deals with the, man, if I find a real good person, a real good business, I love doing business with these people. That's what our intentions are through this educational process is to make them love to buy from us. Mm. All right. Good. Thank Questions you. from anybody else here as we kind of wrap things up? You can chat it. You can type it on the screen. Does oh, Colonial God. Pen, does their, do their rates go up? No, they're level. So I'll say, hey, look, it's, it, it, the prices do, just like the commercial says, the prices stay the same. The coverage never cancels, but what's the catch? Well, let me show you. No Check coverage the first two years. Yeah, check out this back of this form here. And this is the actual colonial pen. Read right there. What does that say? Oh, it says no coverage is for not for non only for accidental death in the first two years. Sometimes it'll be like, what does that mean? It means if you, you gotta go like get hit by a car for this to pay. <laughs> I was just thinking yeah. that. You have a heart attack, stroke, cancer, natural cause of death, they just give you your money back. Sorry, you're not getting 10 grand, you're getting 500. Is that going to bury you? No. Mm. No. They'll, they'll, they'll be, hell no. So, yeah. Well, and also, aren't they more expensive anyway? Yeah, but one of the things I do in the sales presentation is I don't like focus on price. It, 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 it's a, people buy on value, okay? Like the, the people who say, thing in this business is there is an element of price that we need to be aware of. I believe in giving our clients the best deal that we can. Best doesn't necessarily mean lowest price. It's a combination of underwriting, pricing, and making sure that the policies that we submit actually gets issued. It's kind of a moving target. Mm-hmm. But I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you were saying? Uh about price that you don't sell oh, on price. Yeah, price. Even if they are more expensive, it doesn't matter. Don't emphasize that. Yes, yes. Price is ancillary. It's, it's a second or third place back burner concern to what the policy does and how effective it is. 
Um, so I can argue Colonial Pen, even if it was more competitive, are you willing to sit here and tell me you're not going to die in the next two years? Can you afford to take that risk? Likewise, can you afford to take it a term insurance plan that, that the company who is smart and who has money knows statistically that most people won't outlive or most people will outlive or they just won't be able to afford the premiums? Do you really want to take that risk? No. So, so that's a value proposition. That's not a price proposition. So I, I don't want agents to go in and say, don't buy Colonial Pen because it's really expensive. Or don't buy ARP because the price goes up high. I want you to focus on you out. I want you to focus on this plan not working in these set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. I believe that moves more people towards your favor than just a rudimentary discussion on price. It doesn't mean doesn't mean talking about prices is, is invalid. It just there's a hierarchy to things, and the pricing mm -hmm. element really with with a conceptual explanation of what the product does does not matter it shouldn't matter it shouldn't matter what the price is if it's a bad product it's a bad product you know but the only bad thing about colonial pen really is the first two years right and it's, yeah a absolutely but that's that's enough for okay. us to make a sales pitch i mean you the thing you've got a picture is imagine being with, you know, imagine having a, your daughter who's not in, not financially well off. She's struggling as it is anyway. And then what if you bought this plan and you died and you left this burial burden to her? How would that make you feel? So that's, that's why I clone make her plan. feel. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, how would it make her feel? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's like, it's not just, it's for the client or the prospect and their family. And they really. Life insurance is for the living, not the dead. Oh. It's a good way to put it. Oh, okay. So you're agreeing with me. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you can say it in so many words. Like we buy life insurance, not because we're taking the money with us. We're, we're doing it because we love somebody. I say a lot. Life insurance is about love. Who do we yeah. love and want to take care of? Yay. So, so they're all thinking this when you're telling the stories, explaining the concepts, making the connections. And you've not, and how much, how much pressure have I used? I don't think there's been any pressure. None. None. Yeah, that's a huge plus. I don't believe in yeah. pressure. And that's, that's the other big thing is, is we're, we are an advocate for the little guy and we're out for justice and that sets us at a higher level than simply a burial insurance peddler and that's how you convert more people is is having that kind of high-minded status about what you do because it really is you're really saving lives you really are um, money is the biggest problem for families causes more divorces than anything causes so much emotional strife even 10 grand may not seem like a lot to some people, but to people of little means, it's a huge amount or 15 right. grand or whatever the number is. It can make all the world's difference. And it's only because you show up and help these people that it makes it happen. Huh. You're saying that to the right person. I'm really into justice, so. All right, you're in the right business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I'm, I'm gonna hang it up here, guys. So. Arun, hey, I got your message. I posted that link there. If you're watching this on the recording, Arun, if you don't get to it, just email me. I'll, this is the direct link to the script. Yes, I'm following the script. You can follow pretty much what I've described here uh, in that script. So please go get it, download it, study it. Really need to if you're going to sell this stuff. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I think today was pretty productive. Lots to learn here. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Tina, for playing prospect or me playing prospect. You playing agent. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, guys. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. All right. Thank you.